become comfortable we will begin with a small chanting with om please sit comfortably with your hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra eyes and mouth gently closed head neck shoulders back in a straight line bring your awareness to your eyebrow center bhru madhya and maintaining your awareness at this point we shall chant the mantra om three times if it is easily possible try to feel the vibration of the mantra at this point at the eyebrow center taking in a deep breath oh 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 ओम सहना सह नौ भुन सह वीर वह तेजस्वीना वदी तमस्त मिदिषा वह ओं शाति 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 हरि ओम हरिओं तत्सत जेंटली रब यू पाम्स अगेंस्ट ईच अदर जनरेट सम बॉम्स प्लेस द पाम्स ऑन द क्लोज आईज एंड देन वेन कंफर्टेबल जेंटली मूव द पाम्स अवे ओपन योर आईज हरिओं तत्सत नमो नारायण जय हो so a warm welcome to all the participants to this session which is an orientation towards practicing yoga regularly what are the points that we need to keep in mind what has to be our approach what is our outlook what has to be the understanding where do we begin and where are we headed to these are few points which we need to understand today yoga is a very well known phenomena some people treat yoga as a set of physical practices some people treat yoga as a set of extremely complicated mental processes so we shall need to understand what actually yoga means and what it can do for me few days ago i had been to a concert and it was a really you know big area multiple instruments were placed and all those instruments were playing the effect of that was amazing and that orchestra was beautiful we had the violin we had the drum we had the uh, cymbals so many different things and exactly at the correct moment somebody would come in and then set move away another instrument would play but that whole impact was so beautiful i didn't even know how almost 2 hours went by and then at the end of it i was thinking it was an amazing thing however for that to be amazing 
there was one person who was most crucial, the person who was conducting the orchestra. And all of us would have seen him or her waving the hands magically and sometimes maniacally also. But based on those cues, everybody knows when to come in, when to go out, what to do, what not to do. And when we do that, then there is beautiful, soul-stirring music. But just imagine what would happen if some of the instruments start playing out of time. Instead of music, there will be noise, there will be cacophony. And everything would go waste. Instead of feeling uplifted and happy and joyful, we will feel extremely irritated, angry, frustrated. My friends, this is the story of our life too. Just pause and think. Our body is just like an orchestra. You have different systems all functioning on their own. The piano has a life of its own. The harmonium has a mind of its own. The tanpura has a mind of its own. All instruments have a mind of their own. But they blend in beautifully to create symphony. Our body also, in the same manner, is regulated very, very fine-tuned manner so that there is no discordant notes. And as long as there are no discordant notes, then the symphony of life plays beautifully. Unfortunately, there are multiple situations by which this symphony goes out of sync. And then discordant notes start coming in. Swami Shivananji, Gurudev's Guru, whom we call as Param Guru, he defined yoga as the harmony between the head, the heart and the hands. The head meaning the intellect, the heart meaning the emotions, and the hands meaning the organs of action. So perception, cognition, understanding, processing and response. When there is a fine balance, harmony between them, then the state achieved at that is the state of yoga. And when that is lost, then there are problems, health issues, mental issues, emotional issues, social issues. And many of us know about it very well. The practices of yoga are intended to re-establish this harmony. And when this harmony is re-established, then there is great synergy which comes in. When there is synergy, then 1 plus 1 is not equal to 2. 1 plus 1 can become 11, can even become 111, depending on the resonance, the synergy which comes in. Yoga is a system by which we re-establish this synergy. We are speaking of we, we, we. But who exactly is this we? Who am I? I don't ask this question as the philosophical question. This is a question which great philosophers, yogis, sadhus have been pondering upon. I don't ask it in that manner. My question is much more earthy. Who am I? Am I the body? Yes, I am the body. Who am I? Am I the mind? Yes, I am the mind. Who am I? Am I the emotions? Yes, the emotions also. Who am I? Is there something beyond these which is also me? Yes, that is me also. So, I am the sum total of all of these. And if I am a sum total of all of these, then I need to have a perfect harmony, symphony 
coordination between all these components of what consists, constitutes I. And yoga provides that. To be able to reach that system, there are multiple tools which are available. Some of the tools are very famous in today's times. Asans, many of us have heard of them. Pranayam, many of us have heard about it. Meditative practices, many of us have heard about them. But these are not the only tools. In fact, asanas which have become very famous and very popular, they constitute a very small part of the entire gambit range that is known as yoga. A point to be mentioned here, in the Raj Yoga Sutras compiled by Maharshi Patanjali, he speaks of almost 200 sutras, each sutra speaking of one angle, one dimension of yoga. And there are hardly two sutras which speak of asanas. This is mentioned not to belittle the importance of asanas. No, asanas are in today's times for us very crucial. But they are not the be all and end all. They are not just physical exercises. There is much more to asanas than just that. And this is exactly what we will be trying to understand. When we speak of doing yoga, we are speaking of these dimensions. The scientists of the olden times went a step further and they came to know that this V can be classified into five dimensions. These are known as the koshas, the annamaya kosha, the pranamaya kosha, manomaya kosha, vidnyanamaya kosha and anandamaya kosha. And beyond that is that immortal self, the atma. And we are a sum total of all of this. So, if we need to have harmony, we need to have harmony between all these five dimensions of our being. Asanas are one means by which this harmony can be re-established. But when we are performing asanas, we need to understand few points. Of course, all of you would be knowing the importance of doing asanas on an empty stomach. The importance of maintaining regularity. The importance of the same place, well ventilated. I will not speak of those points. Those you know. But I would like to focus on the mechanism of action of asanas. When you perform asan, what happens within you? If you are performing a controvert, uh, you know, a convoluted asan, what is actually happening? And what is asan? Is asan an exercise? No. Asan means a posture, a specific posture in which the body is brought into. Why? That is because yoga is actually a science of energy modulation and management. There is a subtle energy within this system called us. And yoga is a system by which you modulate that energy so that all the individual energies come into harmony. And that is the reason why everybody, whenever they practice asanas or pranayam or yoga, first thing is told to them, please sit straight. How many of you are sitting straight? And how many of you have slouched? Please observe and sit straight. That's very crucial. Why the importance and why this excessive emphasis 
on sitting straight and then why the emphasis on the final posture the initial initial posture in an asana that is because asana is a method by which the energy of the body is modulated and brought into a specific circuit if you have electricity flowing through a wire it has an impact but if the same wire is turned into a spiral and kept has a completely different impact the same wire when you pass electricity suddenly burns off i'm sure many of you would know that so therefore whenever you are having wire you are supposed to keep it straight if you coil it up it will burn that is because of the heating effect of electric current and the magnetic effect of electric current in the same manner when there is this energy which is flowing into the body it needs to be in a specific manner otherwise it can get blocked and can be damaging another way of understanding it is to be able to if you have to pass water from one end of the pipe to the other and if there are multiple kinks in the pipe will the water flow no it will not to be able to ensure that the water flows properly it is crucial it is essential it is necessary that we maintain the pipe clean clear unkinked that is why you should sit straight your vertebral column is straight no kinks over there and when you start with that then you proceed into the final posture and in the final posture you should wait for a moment or two after that then you need to practice the asan with awareness awareness sajagta that is a very crucial word in yoga ideally there are five dimensions and so there have to be five steps in performing every asan but for beginners it is essential to practice at least three first with body awareness next with breath awareness third with visualization and coordinating between the mental practice and the physical practice why body awareness when we are practicing any asana actually the manifestation is outside you are doing shoulder rotation it is the shoulder which is moving the elbow is going round and round but it is in the brain that the impulses are being generated and when there is a smooth regulated movement the impulses in the brain are smooth and regulated that has an impact on the entire brain regulating and rhythmic movements that is why any asan has to be done in a smooth non jerky manner secondly when you are aware then there is a sense of proprioception which is there in the brain the proprioceptive system becomes suddenly active and the proprioceptive system works on the entire brain not just on one or two parts of the brain you might be moving the shoulder but when you are aware of the movement the entire brain lights up when you are doing just mechanically and talking to somebody and looking on your phone then the areas in the brain which are activated come down you are doing shoulder rotation but actually you are working in the brain in your vertebral column that is the significance of asana second level is the level with breath awareness when you are moving your shoulder as you bring the shoulder up above the shoulder level we start inhaling so when we are inhaling it is not that we just inhale and then complete the practice no there has to be coordination we start inhaling continue inhaling complete inhaling and as the elbow goes below shoulder level we start exhaling 
continue exhaling continue complete exhaling and as it goes up again we start inhaling so therefore there is a proper coordination between the physical movement and your breath second level of coordination in the brain and the systems the third visualization maybe i have got a problem in my shoulder and i am able to only move my shoulder so much no problem when i visualize i have to visualize the 100% perfect posture and the greater detail you are able to visualize the better it is and you will observe that if you are not able to do a practice just keep your eyes closed and keep on visualizing the greater details you go into your in your visualization you will see in a month or two your practice starts improving the mind pulls the body up so initially you are just doing so much but after some time it starts moving and you are able to do much more so these are the three dimensions in which any asan has to be performed secondly whatever you are doing with the right side of the body you should do the same number with the left side not that i in enthusiasm i have done 20 rounds on the right side and now i'm tired so i'll just do few rounds on the left side no whatever you are doing on the right side equal number on the left side if you are doing right and left separate whatever you are doing in the clockwise direction the same number you do in the anti clockwise direction there has to be a balance which has to be maintained of course there are other dimensions also but those will come slowly this is the basis understanding this if you start performing the asanas then you will have greater impact it does not matter how complicated your asan is what matters is the system when you have this system you will see the impact is exponential yoga is a holistic science so if i am having burning in my uh, stomach i take an acidity if i am having pain in my knees i will take another medicine if i am having some other problem i will take a third medicine no here whenever whatever problem we are having yoga says it is happening because of this imbalance which has taken place and we need to re establish this balance whatever asan you do it is affecting the entire system body mind spirit annamay pranamay manomay vidyanamay anandamay everything it affects and as it affects slowly and slowly the effect deepens so please do not try and go for complicated asans right away start slow, slow start small and very essential that you need to have what is known as the yoga of common sense i know how much my body is capable of i do not go beyond that don't over stretch or over strain or become over enthusiastic go slow be regular you, you can do once a week fair enough you can do twice a week fair enough you can do thrice a week fair enough you can do four times or five times a week fair enough decide what you can and do that much if you feel you can do five hours every day please start with five minutes every day the mind is the one which is going to create problems not the physical ability mind will start playing tricks oh i have this work oh i have that work oh i have this that the other and it will not be possible for doing it regularly so do only very small 5 minutes every day half an hour twice a week whatever you have to take a call on that and stick to it when you do that over a period of time there is an impact there is a change that is point number 1 point number 2 pranayam please understand very clearly that oxygenation and improved oxygen levels is not i say not the aim of pranayam that is only a side benefit of pranayam so what is pranayam for that we need to understand 
the importance of pranayam the methodology of pranayam when we breathe in and breathe out we have a center in the brain which regulates the breath we are regulating that center in the brain in the same manner rhythmic inhalation rhythmic exhalation the rhythm creates an impact if you have seen the experiment you have a string across the wall and you put two pendulums you pull one pendulum and that pendulum has got a larger mass and you put another pendulum that has got a smaller mass a bigger ball and a smaller ball and you pull that if both the pendulums are out of sync as long as they are connected above over a period of time they will start moving in the same length that is synchronization in the same manner when you breathe in a rhythmic manner there are impulses generated in the brain and over a period of time this rhythmic impulse spreads throughout the entire system bringing in harmony so all the body cent uh, brain centers start working in harmony that is the importance of pranayama second thing when we breathe we observe that the breath is not only dependent on what we want to breathe but it is also dependent on many factors like the emotions like the feelings like the thoughts if you feel scared your breath changes if you are afraid if you are angry if you are excited if you are passionate your breath changes and when you start feeling depressed again your breath changes which means that the centers in the brain which depend which control our emotions our hormonal systems our thoughts they and the center in the brain which controls the respiratory system they are in extreme close contact with each other change in one spills over to the other that is why any impact on your thoughts impacts your breath if you are having a chair and you lift one foot of the chair it is not that you can lift one foot in isolation it is going to have an impact on all the other three legs also in the same manner when thoughts come in it affects everything else in pranayam we are reversing this by conscious regular breathing in and out in specific manner we are now having a reverse impact on your thoughts on your emotions on your systems everywhere that is the second dimension of pranayam a third dimension our body systems have got two types of actions one set of actions which is in our voluntary control and another set of actions which is not in our voluntary control if i forget to go and bring milk milk is not brought if i forget to clean doesn't happen if i don't pick up the telephone doesn't happen this part of our body systems which undertake these activities is un under our voluntary control but if i forget still i will not stop forgetting to get the heart to beat can you imagine oh i forgot i was so busy so i forgot and i forgot to tell the heart to beat what will happen riyom tatsat in one minute the story is over no so those systems which are crucial for the sustenance of the body they are taken out from voluntary control and there is an autonomic control which is given they are given autonomy the heart keeps beating no matter what that control is known as the autonomic nervous system and all the organs are either under voluntary control or under autonomic control but there is one organ one system which has got dual control if you want you can take a deep breath if you want you can hold your breath if you can want you can exhale deep and long but if you decide to stop breathing after some time 
there is something which overrides your decision to stop breathing and suddenly you are forced to take in a breath autonomic control by controlling your breath you are controlling you are modulating you are uh, changing the function of the autonomic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system works on multiple different dimensions you are able to control all of that that is the importance of pranayama finally lastly and most importantly we call it as pranayama we don't call it as breathayam or shwasayam there is a difference between prana and shwasa shwas is the manifestation prana is the principle in the same manner as electricity is the principle and the bulb lighting up is the manifestation in the same way these two are different things when electricity goes away we commonly say bulb gaya hai fan band ho gaya hai we mean or we say light gaye light don't go anywhere light is sitting in the same bulb holder but what has gone is the principle behind in the same way when we are working with your breath you are actually stimulating modifying modulating and activating the pranic system within us that is why it is pranayam so the when you are doing pranayam you are having this many levels of action which is happening and therefore pranayam has to be done with great care finally relaxation and meditative practices the mind has been found to be very powerful everybody knows that in meditation in relaxation we slowly use this connection of the mind gaining control over the mind befriending our mind so that the higher centers which are at the moment dormant can slowly be activated there is not much to be explained about it all of us have a fair idea about it so these are the three different practices asan pranayam meditative practices when we are practicing them then it is in this manner it needs to be practiced and when we do it in this manner then we optimize the use of the tool provided to us otherwise it is like having an ak47 rifle and we are using it to stomp the mosquito to death or to bludgeon the person hit him by the butt of the rifle we are not using it to shoot because we don't know how to shoot the moment you know how to shoot you can just entire army can be annihilated in a matter of moments this is what we need to do to be able to awaken the higher senses within us higher abilities within us we might begin like in the bhagavad gita with complete discordancy despondency everything is out of sync but by the practices we are able to get everything into sync and become a super human that is the aim of yoga to be able to convert oneself from being a human to super human doing that we get satisfaction contentment fulfilling our desires and most important happiness because that is why we do everything and to do that we need to start with the body good health the body in the mind is what is essential uh, we will conclude with shanti part so please sit in any comfortable posture gently close your eyes hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back in a straight line
awareness of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes, the head, the neck, the shoulders, the arms, the chest, the upper back, the abdomen, the lower back, the hips, the legs, the whole body. Awareness of your breath. I am breathing in and I am aware I am breathing in. I am breathing out and I am aware I am breathing out. Normal, spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center. Visualize the form of a bright flame, a jyoti. And maintaining awareness of this image or maintaining awareness of a subtle pulsation at this point, we shall chant the mantra Om three times followed by Shanti. Taking in a deep breath, Oh, oh, oh. Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amrutam Gamaya Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Prambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukam Iva Bandhanam Mrityor Mokshiyam Amrutat Om Shanti 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 hi. And Sin Pranam Mudra. Vameva Mata Chapita Twameva Twameva Bandush Chasaka Twameva Twameva Vidya Dravidam Twameva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Om Hari Om Satsat Gently rub your palms against each other Generate some warmth Place the palms on the closed eyes Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes to the brain to the whole body Energizing the eyes, the brain, the body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Are you? Sir.